We give you greetings today in that wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is, as Walter and Nina like to end their program with, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Well, as you can see, I am not Walter Zagrevich. I am Tony Abram. And once again, I come to the plate, if you know baseball, what I'm talking about right now. And I am a pitch hitter. I am substituting as host today. And we have a great guest, evangelist, Marcy Laboki. And she has been such a blessing in so many parts, not only of the United States, but in Canada, and but also in different parts of the world, and a lot in the former Soviet Union. And over there, they think she is just the best. And Marja, who is it that they call her over there? They call her the Joyce Myers of the former Soviet Union. I was just going to say Ukraine, but they like her everywhere. And she has been in so many of the schools teaching. And, and you know, being a woman, uh, it has not been as easy as for a man. Now, before we introduce and hear her, I want to bring you up to the point that you take your, your phone and do a little evangelism today. You know, some people think that they are saved simply uh, to be saved to go to heaven, but we are saved also to serve and to win others. And if you would just take your phone today and with that phone, hit the share. Now that's exactly what I'm doing. And that means that well, I don't have that many as some may have. I have 15 or 1600 uh, friends on my, on my uh, Facebook. And so when I hit share, uh, really, it's supposed to be everybody being willing, able to see it. And if they would share, it wouldn't take long if a lot of people would, and every believer that watched, I would share, you know what would happen? We would have millions watching and sharing. And you know what you're doing? You're doing evangelism. You're winning others or telling others. You know, we can only bring people to the cross. We can't get them to open their hearts and receive Christ, but we can bring them. And once you bring them in, if they truly get a glimpse of Jesus all through the word, through testimony, through what you share with them. You'll be so happy on that day when you see Jesus, when he says, well done, good faithful servant or handmaiden, uh, you will be blessed. But now, uh, before we do anything else, we're going to hear a few words and then we're going to be bouncing back and forth. And uh, Sister Marcy, she has something she's going to bless us with today. And uh, uh, she, anytime we hear from her, it's always a blessing. And what I, what I also, what I like about her, she's got this, uh, well, you can understand. You don't have to be a super college graduate to understand what she's saying. She talks like down home people. And I appreciate that so much because Tony Abram can understand when she talks. And I've heard some of these preachers uh, use such words that even uh, I, have to, I have to look it up to understand what they're saying. Uh, but uh, let's just have a word of prayer for Walter and Nina and, uh, and um, uh, Albert Ramirez, who's also mm -hmm. with them. Uh, they've been ministering in Ukraine and uh, they're gonna be going to Poland. And I think their last meeting on the way home, they're gonna be in Manchester, England. Uh, and we know many of the people there ourselves, and we're just believing God for some good things there. And uh, 
it may, maybe a little later on, I'll, I'll even share a little testimony about a, a event with Walder and us when before he was married in Poland. That was a time we were all arrested uh, in the Soviet Union for a few days. I uh, will tell you a little bit about that, but let's pray for them right now. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, and I know Sister Marcy feels the same. We thank you, Lord, that we have the privilege of uh, sh sharing the wonderful gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord, we want to lift you up and tell the world how great and how wonderful you are. And use this uh, telecast broadcast, uh, Lord, uh, to touch others uh, in the name of Jesus, that they too may be filled with the joy of the Lord. And Lord, in Jesus' name, for our dear brother Walter Zagrabich and Nina, his dear wife, we pray that you will anoint them, bless them, protect them by your power and by your spirit. And Lord, whatever is said and done today may be done for the joy of the Lord. And speak to hearts of people to share so that others may hear as well. Praise the Lord. Sister Marcy, we'd love to hear what you have to say to us today. Praise the Lord. It is such a privilege for me to, uh, to join you today, uh, Brother Tony. Uh, just something was going through my mind uh, about what a privilege it is for me to be talking to you and to hear you and to be relating with you and March both. It's such a, such a joy for me. Um, before I met you, you know, I was, I was preaching already. It's going to be like 57 years that I'm in the ministry. I started pastoring when I was 22 years old, uh, single. And I don't know why the people submitted to me. I mean, that's a kid, right? And then I thought I was such a big boss, you know, maybe, I don't know. But uh, then everywhere I'd go, I'd hear Tony, Tony Abram, Tony Abram. People were just like, this is such a great evangelist because you were, you were, you are a very renowned evangelist. And uh, everywhere I went, I heard your name and everything. and and uh, they said, have you ever met him? And I'm like, no, no, where, when I get there, he's gone. Or when, where, where I am, he's not. And where, you know, he is, I'm not. And I just missed, missed, missed. I honestly prayed and I said, Lord, let me meet Tony and Marge Abram. They are so popular and, and great. It, it, there's nothing wrong with that, to be popular for the Lord, for the kingdom of God. And that's, everybody knew you wherever I went they knew you and I was like wait I gotta get to know this evangelist this awesome minister of the gospel and then when I met you it was even a greater thrill even the reports didn't tell me what how great you are because when you speak brother Tony there's faith there's such an anointing there on the words and all I always get blessed when I hear you even you make announcements it's a blessing and because God's anointing is on you and uh, so I want to thank you for the privilege uh, that you've invited me to be on the program today today just a little later after brother Tony shares maybe his testimony uh, I think I would like to share on how do we get into the will of God and stay in the will of God? Because so many people have problems with, with uh, always coming up to the altar. What are you praying about? I need to know the will of God, especially younger people. I need to know. And there's old people that they never know the will of God for their lives either. And they're, and they're, they're you know, bouncing around and not sure, just sitting on the pew and just kind of have no vision, have no, no oomph in their life to go forth in the kingdom of God and be a blessing in the body of Christ. 
And so I'd, I'd like to share a few little things. And Brother Tony, if you have some, I know that you do. Um, just go ahead and jump in whenever I'll be sharing. So I just wanted to greet you all in the name of the Lord. Thank you for joining us. We're, it's a privilege for us to be ministering. And uh, we know that you're all watching and praying and believing God to build others, build you up and, 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 and be a blessing to you. God bless you. Thank, thank you, Sister Marcy. Uh, your words, uh, they, they, they do humble me. I, I appreciate that. Um, and we give all the honor and glory to God. We don't want to take anything from the Lord, but we, we, do, we do appreciate it coming from you. Now, actually, we heard about you too. Yeah, your brother spoke of you because we met them first, Nathaniel. Uh, he was working and ministering and teaching at uh, uh, Brother Hebranko's uh, in Swan River in uh, northern Manitoba. And I was a, I was a conference speaker there uh, one uh, the first time. I was there a couple times, but uh, uh, and they spoke well of you. And, and then uh, we don't meet here in the States, I don't believe the first time. We met in, in, uh, in Ukraine. In, in the ministry there. And, and I thought, man, no wonder these, I, I start hearing about you over there too. And, uh, and I thought, man, when I heard you, I said, man, this, this woman, she's great. You know, the Lord has got anointing upon her life. And so, you know, we're all workers together with Christ and anything with uh, ever done or said, we want, I, I believe a true man of God, a woman of God, they, they, they want to bring not glory to themselves, but they want to give glory to the Lord. And, and we appreciate it. And that's, that's what we want to say about Walter and Nina. Uh, they, 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 are, they are a couple that God is using in global vision. And uh, I know that you and myself, uh, we kind of are privileged to, uh, to be a part uh, in the background uh, helping him. I, I know you're, you're a lot younger than me. But uh, together, uh, our ministry now uh, on here is trying to boost them because they're, they're now on the front lines of evangelism. And, uh, of course, uh, you are still traveling, and, and I, Marge and I aren't traveling as much. And, and what is wonderful, what is so wonderful is that this uh, uh, Zoom and and that we can be on these different platforms. I know I talk about uh, uh, Facebook, but uh, we're go actually going on uh, LinkedIn and I don't know all the different uh, platforms we're on so that we literally are covering the world. I, I know that I've seen uh, from all parts of the world, different parts of the world coming from Africa, from, from uh, even Finland. And it's been many, many years since. So we, it was when Brother Walter was with us as a, uh, he wasn't a teenager and he was already in his early 20s, but uh, we got arrested in uh, uh, the Soviet Union. And, uh, and the Lord, it's a long story, but the Lord showed me and they were going to drown him uh, from off the ship because there was a ship going to Helsinki, Finland. And, uh, and they, they blocked us from going in. This is under the days of uh, 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 communism, of course. And uh, I remember uh, we, we were under house arrest ourselves and, and they had him even behind bars, I guess, for a while there. And then they had him on the ship and they wanted to take him alone. And the Lord gave me a dream what they were gonna do with him. And uh, I demanded that we go with them to be his protection because he still had his Paraguayan uh, passport and they didn't recognize that. Uh, and uh, that's a story in itself. But anyways, we got to Finland and they let him in and we had some ministry. We ended up, the Lord gave us two crusades and not only did some souls come to Christ, uh, but uh, I remember uh, the healings, a couple outstanding healings Deaf and dumbs were healed. Someone said that don't happen. Well, it happened in Jesus' time. It can happen today. 
and uh, we, we we just had a great time and god turned it into a good a good uh, time and then we went to poland and uh the lord blessed and uh we tried to get back into uh the soviet union uh, another one it was the day before that was the time before computers and we figured they wouldn't know and uh here we got arrested again and uh, but uh, it was only for about eight eight hours that was long enough because we were uh, on the polish side when we uh got arrested uh for what it was that they hear we were preaching the gospel and they and then they hated the gospel and they were afraid of the gospel. They were afraid of the Bible. But thank God of God before us who can be against us. Now, uh, just just before we hear from you, I know that whatever God gives you is going to be good. I just share this one testimony. Some people may find it hard to believe. But on that on that time when we came back in, came into Poland uh, uh, from, on board of a kind of a ship, uh, we came into Oh, I'm trying to think of the name of the city in the north. Um, it's it's where uh, the 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 uh, strikes began uh, that finally uh, really changed uh, uh, Poland. Uh, anyways, we were in the country. We want we wanted to minister, and we saw the heads. And I believe they were appointed there by the Communist Party in Poland at that time. And they said, oh, there's nothing you can do. You better just leave. And uh, and I says, Is there, isn't there anything we can do in Poland? And they said, no, nothing you can do. They says, there's a, a church or two you can visit on your way to uh, uh, Western Europe. And because uh, we were driving a car, a rental. And as we were driving, the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart and mentioned the town of Lublin. Uh, it, it just came, and of course, Lublin, uh, it, it means love in Slavic languages. And um, and and this, <laughs> you know, I turned to Walder. I says, Walder, is there a city called Lublin in this country? He said, yes. And uh, I said, do we have any contacts? Do we know anybody? Uh, it, and he had a little list somewhere in his shoe. I remember, and he pulled this out. I think it was in his shoe, yes. And and he said, yes, there's a preacher there. He's been persecuted. He's been in jail. And I said, well, the Lord says we're going there. Look on the map. And we figured out we came. I'm going to try and make this real short. And we came there. And uh, you have to register, of course, as soon as you come in uh, with the police. And uh, or you just go to a hotel. Well, we went to a hotel. And I says, Walter, you go ahead and look up these people uh, while we are, Marge and I will check in uh, the uh, this hotel. It wasn't much of a hotel, but anyways, he got in a taxi and he went to this place. Well, meanwhile, there, there was one church there with maybe 25, 30 people and they were having a prayer meeting and uh, or some get together in a pastor's home and uh, oh, well, I was in an apartment on about fourth or fifth floor. And Walter arrives, but they're talking. And while they're talking, there comes a word of, of prophecy and said that my, my servants have arrived. My three servants have arrived in the city and great blessing is going to come as you believe. and. Uh, uh, actually, this happened a few hours before we got there, uh, and they got excited and they ran and got the rest of the people in their church, and they gathered together in the home room, packed in there. And and here's Walter coming up and walking up all the stairs with no elevator. He's walking up, and their guests gathers together, talking about this, discussing this, and uh, all of a sudden. Uh, they said an angel, not all of them seen him, but the angel was so tall, his wings, they said, touched the ceiling. And he spoke to them and said, behold, my three servants have arrived and prepared to receive them. 
And then the angel said, behold, one is at the door and Walter knocked on the door. The angel disappeared. They opened the door, here was Walter. And, and from that moment, uh, the, the, the doors, uh, uh, that door was open there in that city. And we had such an uh, outpouring of the spirit of God. There was a Lutheran church there uh, from German church. And they had a two or three elderly ladies uh, that kept it open. The government left the church open because there was still a couple people and uh, it was packed out with professional type people too like like uh, like uh, doctors and nurses and even i didn't know it nuns and and priests were coming and god poured out his spirit and a lot little to know this or not but the charismatic revival that happened in poland started from lubin from that from that crusade so God can direct us what we think is bad, like being arrested. And, and uh, I remember the, holding the machine gun on me for hours, go to the bathroom. Here's a guy holding the machine gun on you. And I, I could make a little joke, say you don't have trouble going with a machine gun point, pointing at you. <laughs> and, uh, but God kept us turned evil, what was meant for evil, he turned it into good. Well, Walter and Nina are in Poland right now, ministering to the people. They had a great time in Ukraine. And, uh, and so continue to pray for them. And when they get, I'm sure they're sending some stuff through the, through the uh, email and through Facebook and other uh, platforms. And some, we're hearing some things, but we'll hear the good things. Uh, when they get back uh, in a couple of weeks. So keep on praying for them mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and God's gonna do some great things. So uh, Sister Marcy, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry I took maybe a lot of your time if you, especially if you got one of those super duper messages that I've heard you uh, preach and teach on. But anyways, God bless you. We, we're, we're looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much, Brother Tony. I enjoy hearing that. You know, we enjoy hearing testimonies. People do. People love testimonies. They don't want to just be given information, you know, not just some kind of theological information. And then they don't know how to apply it. And then they leave church and you say, well, oh, the, the, the service was so good. Why did he preach? I don't know, you know. I don't know. So how are they going to apply that to their life? And they don't even know what he preached because you forget you know why because it's not real it's not it's just information like you're reading a book to somebody you know and testimonies like this what it does is all right so that was a miracle that was a lot of miracles in there not just one yeah. a lot of miracles that is just uh, amazing people are watching now and and they need a miracle they need a miracle you know, Brother Tony, you did the right thing to save Walter's life, as it were. And God anointed that whole episode with his anointing and gave miracles. You didn't sit there, oh, God, give me a miracle, give me a miracle. No, you just did what's right. And for those of you who are listening, just do what's right. Do what's right. Never mind the outcome. God will give you a good outcome if you do what's right. The Bible says that Jesus came to give us life, not death. Yes, everybody has to die, but you know what I, we mean. Jesus came to give us life and to give it more abundant life to us. And that's what we're listening. That's that's the testimonies. You know, I believe in the in the olden days let's age or you know show show them our age we used to have testimonies in the church did you guys have testimonies in the church where you were? yes yes don't you think that that is necessary for people to hear testimonies yes and when you testify you get stronger too 
you know, because you're repeating the miracle that God gave you. And, you know, I, I, let me just give a little teaching here. I wasn't even going to talk about this, but I will. You know, the word report, the Bible says, whose report will we believe? Will you believe? This was just a report <clears throat> that Brother Tony gave about their trip, about the miracles that God performed. I, I see miracles everywhere in that report. But what is a report? Re, the word re in English is do it again, to like revival, again, make us alive. Vibe is life. Okay, so revive, make us alive again. Repent, repent, pent is like a penthouse, the highest position. So when you're going to the altar and you're repenting, you're not crying, oh God, no. You know what you're doing? You're stepping out of sin, out of the lowest places, out of bondage, out of, out of some pits of hell. And you're stepping up into the kingdom of God because you're saying, Lord, receive me into your kingdom. Lord, I receive you into my life and heart. Forgive my sins. You know what you're doing? You're going to the highest position. You're going to the right hand of the Father where Jesus is seated at. And Ephesians 2, 6 says that we are seated there in Christ, at the right hand of the Father. Where is that? At the highest place in the penthouse, the highest room in a hotel. Hallelujah. So when you see that word repent, that's what it means. Return to the highest place. You went down low into sin and missed the mark and you don't know the will of God for your life. God says, repent. Repent. Lord, I'm sorry. I'm not in the highest place. I'm not seated at the right hand of the Father right now, but I want to be. Forgive me my sins. Forgive me for crawling around down there where the devil really is crawling around on the ground. Not, I should not be there, but I'm going to go to the highest place because I accept Jesus into my heart and into my life. Oh, I feel that. I know that you are there. I, I feel that there's, are people that you are doing that right now, you're saying, Jesus, I come to you. I ask you to save my soul, cleanse me and accept me into your kingdom. I accept you and I'll do my best to follow you what I know to do right now, but I'll find somebody else who knows you and I'll fellowship with them. And I'll find a church, even if there's five people in that church, I'll come there and I'll be part of them. And I'll serve you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You know, report. Now, here's the meaning of report. What is report? You know what a port is? A port is an opening or a port is a port on the ocean where you, the boats come and they pick up merchandise. They come to the port. Correct? Like airport. See, that's a port for airplanes. Airport. Report is to put the <clears throat> to the, put the testimony. Pretend this this pen here is a testimony. It's my testimony. I gave it twenty years ago, but now I take this again and I report it. I put it again. Make it available for all the ships who come to that port. All the ships who come to Zoom. All the people who come that they can take this merchandise, and now they can take it to their land, wherever, to the uttermost parts of the earth. See, because we reported it, we put it again on the port, made it available again. Woo, glory. Doesn't that feel good? Amen. Isn't that powerful? Report. Whose report will we believe? Will you believe? Stop reporting the devil's testimonies oh i'll make you sick i'll make you poor people don't love you da, 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 da. don't report that don't put it on the port again that dirty dirty testimony put god's testimony on there you know what jesus is alive jesus is great i love him when i worship him i feel his presence in his presence there's so much joy put that in the, in, the, in that on that port for all those ships then that come from Africa, from Central America, South America, from Europe, from everywhere, those ships will come and they'll pick up that 
that report that you put on there and they'll take it with them to their lands and they'll put that again report and it'll go on and on and on because they got friends. We went to Cleveland just two days ago and when we came back, well, everybody wanted a report. Oh, okay, report to us. So how was it? What did you do? How, who did you see? What were the testimonies? You see what I mean? So only not, they gave me a report from there. I took it and now I'm reporting in a different city again. And I'm putting it on the port again for all these ships to go wherever they're working, whichever company they're at. Now they can report and testify in there. That's what Brother Tony was saying, you were saying in the beginning. Just share. Share with your friends. If you've got a thousand friends, think of it. A thousand friends, you're going to be ministering to them because they're going to hear the report, the good report that God is a miracle worker, that God will take care of you. He didn't tell you ahead of time, oh, I'm going to give them a vision. I'm going to give them a word of prophecy and they're going to prophesy. You didn't know that that you didn't know anything all you knew is you just took one step at a time okay and now another step and now another step and you know the bible says the steps of the righteous man are ordered of the lord they're ordered and you know i just read the other day just a little sentence in my notes and it said wherever joseph went god was with him and the sinners realized that they did they said, you know, God is with him and he's blessed and we want to keep him over here because we get blessed. When we're beside him, we get blessed because he's a blessed man because God is with him wherever he is. Amen. He was in prison. I don't, I don't see anything that he was complaining that he was in prison. I don't see anything. Maybe that's why he made it into the Bible. I wonder if some of us. I'm including myself. I'm not pointing fingers at you. I, as well, I don't know if somebody put me in prison, how happy it would be. Huh? Think of it. Paul in prison. And he didn't say, I'm a prisoner of the Roman government. And I don't want the Roman government. He didn't say that. He said, I'm a prisoner of the Lord. Whoa, hallelujah. I'm a prisoner of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And he sits down and says, give me some paper. Give me some pen. Give me some whatever, typewriter. Give me the computer. I'm going to start writing what God is saying, because I'm going to pray for you. And then I'm going to write those prayers. And now we're reading them. We're reading these letters. These letters of encouragement. You're chosen. You're God's child. You're redeemed. You're on top. You're not below. You're not beneath. You're the leader. Hallelujah. He's writing this thing out of where? Maybe there were mice crawling around underneath his feet somewhere and where he was sitting and rats and everything else. And it's cold. And maybe he had arthritis and rheumatism. And maybe his knees were hurting. He had no blanket to cover up his knees so he'd be warm. We... I think so. It could be that way. And you know what? They had, the prisoners also had a guard that they were uh, handcuffed together, didn't they, Brother Tony? Yes. And think of that. Here's his hand with that other guy. And he's like, Jesus, I'm praying for the Ephesian church. I don't know how the other guy stood it, you know. Thank God, you know, would you like to have some, you know, atheist strapped to you? I would. I'd just love it. <laughs> <laughs> I would love it. When I was in Slovyansk, uh, on Saturday, they were cleaning up the church, you know, and I was there all week long and I got to know the women. And I said to this lady, I said, I've never seen you come to church with your husband. Are you, did he pass away? Do you have a husband? She said, yes, I have a husband. I said, oh, I see. And she said, you, you wouldn't believe who he is. I said, who is he? Well, he's a Jewish man, but he's an atheist. Now, how does that fit? That, that, that hat does not fit in that man. So I said, wow, this sounds interesting. I don't know why I had such a desire immediately to go and talk to him. 
I want to hear how he's not believing in God. I just wanted to hear, hear his story. So I said, can we come to your home? And I'd like to just talk to your husband and let him talk to me and relate. We did. He stayed home from work. And he went to buy all the food that the Jewish people, how they make a meal for, for. And he made us a Jewish meal. About four of us came with a car. And we, I had such a good conversation with him. Just um, awesome. Because I was interested in his art, what he was doing, what pictures he was drawing and putting up and, and taking pictures and all that stuff. So he gave me two pictures and he signed on the back there and say, may God lead you in your pathway in serving him. What kind of atheist is this? Wow. So he said, I just love talking with you. And he said, are you still going to be teaching in our church? And that was my last day. And I said, no, I'm going, but I, I hope I'll come back. He said, when you come back, when you come back, I'm going to come to church and I'm going to listen to you preach. I never said anything to him about God. I never said, you know, I think it's just like that missionary, one of the missionaries, I don't know which one it was. Uh, maybe, you know, brother Tony better than me. Um, he said, go around the world and preach the gospel and use words when necessary. Yes. Isn't that powerful? Yes. Because, you know, our actions speak louder than our words. Our actions, our love, our attitude, our spirit. And he sensed that. He sensed that I love him. He's Jewish. I loved him. I thought, huh, I just want to hear how he turned to be an atheist. I really was sincerely wanting to hear. He never told me. I really never asked him. I never put him on the spot. I just simply loved what he was doing and how smart he is and how all that. Well, he said, next time when you come to Slovyansk, I'm going to come to church every day and listen to you teach. Look at this. Look at this. It reminds me of another testimony. Do we still have time, Brother Tony? Oh, yes. This is good. This is good. Another testimony. I, uh, you know, I we started, the, basically, I did. Walter was working, and I would have... Uh, uh, my home Bible study, you know, and it started, you know, because some people think, well, how do I start a church? You know what? Just be the church because you are the church. You are, you are the body of Christ. You are, you're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Hear that? You're the temple of the Holy Spirit. So just be the church. I love that song that says, let the church be the church. Let the people rejoice. Oh, I love that song. Let the church be the church. Stop being some kind of popular entity. Be the church. Do you know even sinners will tell you you're really not being the church? They know it. But when you're really being the church, they know it too. And they will usually come to get saved because they know, they feel. So be the church. Well, we, we rented this duplex and we had a neighbor and they were Nazarene and uh, she would, they were young. They argued all the time. They fought and uh, she would come uh, to my house, knock on the door. Do you have carrots? Yes. So I sort of gave her carrots. You have onions? Yes. Do you know how to make mashed potatoes? I said, yes, I'll show you how to make mashed potatoes. I did. Do you know how I want her? I want her to the Lord, to the power, the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues and the whole thing and her husband. You know how? Through those carrots and those onions and those potatoes. <laughs> how hard is that? Just be Jesus. Just be Jesus wherever you are. Just be Jesus. David, in the Bible, he became king. 
not a shepherd anymore. He became king because he brought bologna sandwiches for his brothers. Is that true? He became king because bologna sandwiches. He came there to feed them and he heard the devil. You know, he heard Goliath. I'm going to kill you. You're going to be our servants and I'm going to win. Who's going to fight again? And Dave is like, oh, I am putting these bologna sandwiches. Guys, you eat over here. I'm going to go and fight him because I killed a bear and a lion. See, he had a testimony. How God gave him a miracle. It was a miracle. How can he kill a bear and a lion? It was a miracle of God. And he said the same miracle will happen here because the bear and the lion don't have any covenant with God. I have covenant and this guy is just like the lion and the bear. He ain't got no covenant with God. He's a heathen. And the one who has a covenant wins. Now listen, when you're born again, you accepted Jesus into your heart and life. You are in covenant because you believe in the blood of Jesus and the cross of Jesus. Hallelujah. So you're in covenant. You know what? Sickness is not incumbent with God. Sickness is like Goliath. You win. Because you're in covenant with God. Sickness is not. Poverty is not. Lack is not. It, discouragement is not. Doubt and fear and unbelief is not in covenant with God. Whatever is not in covenant with God, you win over it because you are in covenant with God. You're God's child and God is standing with you. In fact, and he puts you behind him, his back like a father would put a son behind his back. Say, just stay there. I'll fight this kid. I'll fight this person. I'll fight this thing. Don't even show yourself. Don't even speak up from there. So they don't even know you're behind me. That's what God does. He puts you behind his back and he fights for you. Oh, our God is so good. Our God is so great. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So today, if you have a problem, you have a difficulty, and you have a mountain, that mountain, that mountain of defeat standing in front of you and saying, I will never move, that mountain has no covenant with God. You have a covenant with God. That's why Mark 11, 22, 23, 24, and 25 says, speak to that mountain and tell it to move. That impossibility that somehow you can believe God for everything else except for that mountain. That mountain just has been there forever and forever. And you're like, oh, oh, every time you come to it, oh. You know what Zechariah said, Zechariah 4, 6, and 7 says, say grace, grace, grace to that mountain. What? What do you mean grace? The grace of God. These miracles that we, that we have experienced, Brother Tony, myself, and you out there as well. You know it was the grace of God. God stepped in. By his grace and his mercy. His grace and his mercy endure forever. Forever. He's such a loving God. He will never let Satan beat you up. And he not do anything about it. Call on him. Lord, I thank you. You're with me. Even if you don't feel him with you. He said, I'm, I'll be with you to the ends of the world. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And you haven't left him. You just don't feel him now in your emotions. That's okay. Just call on him. Lord, I know that you're with me. You promise that you're with me and you never lie. So you're with me. I need your help now. Help me with this situation, Lord. He'll come through. He'll help you. And then, you know, when you pray that prayer, trust. Trust. You know, the Bible says in, in Isaiah, not Isaiah, Psalm 37, do not fret. Do not fret. Because of the evil doers. Do not fret because of the evil. Don't fret over that. Don't get angry. Don't get upset. You know what? Bring it to the Lord. He's your father. He loves you. Some of you maybe didn't have a good father that protected you. Learn that God is a good father. 
he watches. The Bible says that his eyes run to and fro throughout the whole earth, looking for someone who really trusts him and really wants him. My God, this creator. Oh, Father, this creator of heaven and earth. I can never thank God enough. I don't have enough years left on this earth. Maybe when I go to heaven, I'll just kneel down and thank him forever and forever and forever. Right. Oh, what a good God we have. A loving God. A caring God. Always watching over us. Just believe that. Some of you are so distressed and so troubled. Over all the news, over the war, over so many things. Trust the Lord. Trust him. The Bible says he's looking for those who trust him, who rely on him, who say like David did. David was in a in, in a in a valley of the shadow of death. He lost, they lost, he lost all the wives and the men and women who came to help him. Everybody was, the enemy took them. And he goes out into the valley and he said, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord, do you hear that? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He is leading me. He is guiding me. Wow. 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 That's how you walk in God's will, in God's plan. You declare who God is to you. He's the Lord is my healer. When sickness is, I'm going to take your life. Go. No, you know what? The Lord is my healer. The Lord is my shepherd. I will not lack in health and strength and in finances. I will not lack in joy and fellowship. I will not lack. If you start saying that 365 days a year, oh, my, we will never recognize you because you'll be so filled with God's glory and God's presence. God will so bless you and so honor you. You can change your life with your mouth, with your heart. Trust him, love him, worship him. Don't talk about what the devil is doing. Forget about it. Don't do that. Don't advertise for the devil. Advertise for God in Jesus' name. Amen. Sister Marcy, that that was a blessing. And as being a preacher, of course, when you listen to another uh, minister or preacher preach, a lot of times you get ideas for a, a, for a sermon that you might want to preach. And something, you said many wonderful things there. And uh, uh, talking about the report, I've never anyone heard anyone talk about report. And you likened it to a seaport, an airport, and I could see what happened at a sea, what happens at a seaport or a um, or an airport. There's like the airport people are coming and going, L a luggage is coming and going. Uh, the the uh, the ones that carry uh, baggage, baggage uh, the baggage, and not only the baggage but uh, well like UPS and all, all these, they, they use these airplanes to carry uh, so much material, uh, so many uh, supplies. And then merchandise. I, merchandise, that's right. And then we take uh, uh, the, the seaport, the ships come in, they unload or they load up. And then, uh, mm. uh, then I thought of, I can think about report. And the Bible talk about the report. And we have a report. People can come to us. Uh, and they do when we're, when we're preaching to them. Or sharing our testimony with them. And they, they, they hear. They can be filled. And they can come in empty. And get filled up. Or they can come in with the joy of the Lord. And then share with you. And bless you. So I, I can see that so wonderfully. And right now, I know there are people that are watching and will be watching uh, and in the future for 
I guess God willing for years to come or maybe till Jesus returns uh, on uh, on uh, YouTube, uh, they, they'll be able to hear and the same Jesus that's present at this very moment while we're live on, on, on this broadcast uh, is able to minister to them. They can come empty and go away full. And um, I believe there are people right now that are sick and afflicted and uh, they need a touch from heaven, from the Lord. And you have been sharing from your heart and you've been sharing from what God has given you. And I see the supply that you have is full and you have much to give. And for those that are, that we can't name all the ones. There are so many that have sent their requests in. God hears and understands each and every one of them. He says, before we call, he hears. While we're yet speaking, he's answering prayer. And I wonder, Sister Marcy, if you would pray for those needs that have coming in this request, God sees each and every one of them. And we can, you can include if you feel led for, to pray for Walter and Nina yes. once again, yes. uh, that God will use them for the glory of God. Praise the Lord. And Marge, you're calling my attention to something. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll give the address at the end. Yes, my wife is worrying about the address. And uh, by the way, I have a birthday coming up this month and uh, through Facebook, you can ask people to uh, donate to you. If you look, read, go through it, you'll probably end up seeing that eventually, uh, you folks that are watching and you're able to give to Global Vision through that. But uh, Sister Marcy, would you, would you pray right now for the people? Certainly I will. I was just going to mention something that, um... I don't know if all the people know, those of us that know you, it's a different story, but some people don't know you probably. They're, we just pray there's a million people who don't know you and they turned on this Facebook and are watching us with, on Zoom. And I was going to say something that um, I believe will be a blessing. Uh, when you give Walter's address, uh, Walter and Tony work together uh, hand in hand and you wouldn't believe it how you say, well, Tony's not traveling no more too much and just a little bit or whatever. Uh, but don't worry, he still was buying churches or buildings for churches. He still sends the money. He doesn't sit there and hoard money. Believe you me, he doesn't. I'm telling you, he doesn't. He, he sends so much money that I'm shocked and amazed where in the world he gets it, but people support him. And if you want to join to support him, I don't know if, if you can even send to Walter and say, this is for Tony Abram, he will send it to Tony. He will transfer that money over to Tony from, from Global Vision because that's how, that's how we get along over here. We're, we are a family of God and, and whoever needs, uh, so many people send money to me and say, I don't know how to send it to Global Vision. I said, send it to me, I'll send it to Global Vision. You know what I mean? So let's do it that way. And we've, I, I just felt today, I, I was looking at you and I just felt like God wanted uh, people to start supporting you more because you know all the places around the world and you have supported and still are supporting people and pastors and missionaries and churches that have started around the world and we just pray that you will uh, do that and of course support the global vision walter is one busy man and nina uh, preaching the gospel i don't know how they keep up with it i don't know what they eat or whatever they do they need some kind of energy food that they keep on going and going i get tired watching them I'm telling you. And so God bless them. Lord, we just thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege and the honor that you gave us, Lord, to minister to thousands of people and, in fact, millions of people around the world. And we just pray for those people who are in need, Lord, in need maybe of finances, 
bless them, show them how to sow and then to reap, Lord. If they can only give $1 a month and that makes $30 a month, that is a tremendous seed. They will have 30 seeds that will be multiplied to them by you, Lord, because that's how it works. What we sow, we reap. And Lord, help people to realize that and to sow into the kingdom of God, because that's the field where it multiplies and multiplies and multiplies, because Lord, you're in charge of that. And Lord, we just pray for those who are sick right now. In the name of Jesus, lay your hands on that heart that is that you're not feeling well in your head or your back or or liver or whatever just put your hand on your body and agree with me in the name of Jesus be healed because Jesus provided the healing for you on the cross and you don't need to carry it thank you Lord for healing thousands and millions today there's millions that need healing and Lord you're not short of healing you're not short of health you can heal every one of them, and we pray in Jesus' name for those who are not saved, that they will turn their lives to you and say, Jesus, I accept you, the King of kings and Lord of lords. I accept you into my heart, into my life, and I will serve you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. Amen. And Lord, as I continue just with a, uh, uh, agreeing with my dear sister, right now and with all the people that are watching and listening and praying lord you said if to agree it would be done and we agree together and we send the word to each and every one uh, whether it's in north america south america africa uh north america lord whether it be asia or australia we send the word uh, uh, we are in agreement. You said to agree. Uh, Marcy and I agree. My wife is here uh, agreeing. And Lord, there are people, and uh, we trust there are multitudes that will end up praying for others uh, uh, together. And then, Lord, there may be those who are, need to repent. Uh, they, they are empty. They've come into that seaport. They've come into that spiritual airport. They are empty. They need filled. Their tanks need filled. And Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus for everyone that would repent and say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my life. Be my personal Savior. Forgive their sins, Lord. Write their name in the book of life as they ask you to do it. And as they say, Lord, you are the Son of God. You have risen from the dead, and because you live, uh, uh, we can live also. And Lord, I pray that you help them, help them to be, uh, help them to be what you want them to be. Lord, they need to pray each day by talking to you. They need to get into the Word. Help them, Lord, and help them become part. Uh, as our sister Marcy said, whether it's four or five, even. Uh, to other Christians uh, in, in, in a church, uh, get together with them. And uh, Lord, let them grow in the, in the knowledge of the Lord. Uh, in Jesus' precious name, we thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. And we give you the glory in Jesus' name. Oh, I believe God's doing things out there, Marcy. I, I know that our God is a good God. And boy, the time goes so quickly. And uh, uh, we, we want to remind you that if you will want to help, and I wish you would, uh, Global Vision uh, uh, Ministries, their mailing address is Post Office Box 5377. That's Post Office Box 5377, El Dorado Hills, California. And what you really need is that zip, 95762. Uh, and if you get that zip code or postal code down, uh, it'll get to El Dorado Hills. But then you also need that Post Office Box 5377. Sister Marcy, 
uh, the other day when we were on together, you uh, you you told them how they could uh, how also they could uh, get this address. They want to help. Yes, turn back to the old programs on YouTube or whatever you have. The old programs, the old, the the ones before these. When Walter is on, when Walter's on, there's a big banner and it gives every all the numbers and Global Vision Ministries and everything on there. And so then you can even, you know, pause it and you can write it down. It's it's harder for old people to write down so fast, you know, and to remember and to think. And so go back to the programs where Walter is on. And he's got that banner there and, and look at it and take all that address in there and do it today and send in something, send, send a little seed, send a little bit of something. I was teaching in the Ukraine uh, years ago and I was teaching on, on giving and how before I go to a meeting, I send money ahead of time. So that when I come, there's a harvest for me already, for me, financial harvest already and souls and everything because I've already prayed and I've talked to the Lord about them. And you know what the people were doing? They were leaving the class one by one and putting money on the pastor's desk, putting money. We went there to have coffee and there was no place to put your cup. There was piles of money. And I thought, why did the pastor not put this money away? I didn't know that's what they were doing. I didn't know they were going there and putting money. I didn't know that. But Walter saw that, my husband. And he said, I said, what's with this money? My goodness, why does the pastor leave the money on top of the desk? It was a big L-shaped desk. Uh, the, the money was piled up that it could slide off. So you just had to push to put your cup here. And I'm like, dear Lord, there's a lot of money here. You know what they were doing? Sewing. Because I was teaching on when you sow, when you sow weeds, you're going to receive weeds. When you sow something good, you're going to receive something good. And I even was preaching that that even a dog can sow. He goes into the into the forest and seeds fall on his on his back, and he comes into your garden, and then there's weeds growing in your garden. You think, who put the weeds in my garden? The dog did. He ran in there, and the, even the seeds of the dog didn't say, "In the name of Jesus, I'm going to sow seed." No, he didn't say that. All that happened is fell off his back. He didn't even know. And he sowed seeds. When you sow seeds, good or bad, they always grow and they always bring a harvest. One bushel of wheat, because I come from the farms where we had wheat. My dad used to put one bushel of wheat. 40 bushels will come back. That's a lot. That's a lot. Second thing, listen, when my dad would be sowing that wheat, we would be ready with more wheat. The Bible says God gives seed to the sower. Just move. Become a sower. Take a dollar. Whatever. Just make that movement of sowing. And sow something little if you can sow big. Sow something. When you become a sower, God says, hey, hey, guys, bring more. More. More of the same. So whatever you want more of, just start sowing it. Start sowing it. And the best thing is money because you can buy clothes for money. You can get houses for money. You can travel for money and everything else. So sow and you will receive. This is, a, this, is, this is not like only a Christian thing. It's just a principle. A principle of God that is eternal. Sowing and reaping will never die. Amen. Amen. That's uh, right, in, right in the Bible. And so you can't be wrong on that. Praise the Lord. Sister Marcy, I want to say on behalf of Walter and Nina that, um, that we appreciate uh, you and, and we love your, your husband too. We don't see much of him, but he's in the background praying and, and supporting your ministry. And we appreciate his name. Now, uh, he, his name is Walter. And of course, it's, it's a different Walter than Walter and Nina. But anyways, we are all workers together with Christ. And it was a privilege to, to have you here. And I'm glad I was had a chance to host the broadcast uh, with you on it. And uh, your message was just wonderful. And we thank God for it. So keep on praying uh, for this ministry uh, tomorrow at the same time. I, I don't know if it's a tape broadcast, 
but I'll be back on on Wednesday. And I think we have a surprise guest. I'm not sure. Uh, you you watch uh, Facebook. Uh, the announcement will be coming on. But Marge and I will be hosting on Wednesday. So uh, uh, th that's uh, two days from now. And then uh, we have uh, some special broadcasts the rest of the week, too, on Thursday and Friday. So keep praying for us. And God richly bless you. And once again, uh, Sister Marcy, thank you for uh, being uh, with us here. And we are looking forward. And I remember what Walter and Nina say. They say uh, to, uh, and I'm looking for something on here. Uh, and we are, we, I want to say how they finish. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever.